What is going on, world? MadGamer.com here. Happy to present a Battlefield 1 DLC video update. Today, we're going to be talking about Battlefield 1's new DLC in the name of the Czar. I spent all of E3 filming a documentary that will come out later on. But for now, we're giving out teasers of some of the interviews that we had with some developers and we sat down with dice la's senior ui artist amir amir has been doing some great work throughout his career so we wanted to sit down and chat to him about battlefield one the dlc what's new what's happening and what's coming we're so excited to present this to you check it out guys Gamer here, chatting with Amar Asas. Eunice. Eunice! Yeah. He is the yeah. senior UI artist at uh, Dice LA. Dice LA. Yeah. We're working on Battlefield 1, working on the expansion packs for Battlefield. We're doing, we just released or announced the second expansion pack in the name of the Tsar, and it's getting good reception. It's been really good. So now, Without getting too spoiler heavy here, yeah. we got a new DLC yeah. in the name of Czar, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And what can you tell us about that specifically on your design, but also in general, just for the studio, of what you know players can really expect to get into when you play that? Um, I think it's going to be releasing around just after summer, and hopefully we're going to have. You know, we have the cavalry, the Hussar cavalry, which is uh, on the horse gameplay where you can actually have a lance and you can impale players, <laughs> uh, which is super fun. Uh, there's also the snowy environment setting, which is uh, new to the battlefield. We've had like the desert, we've had like the forest, uh, but the snow, and we've had to build this tech for the snow to actually feel and, you know, has that kind of like de density and capacity of what real snow looks like. And the game just looks phenomenal anyway. Um, but the new the new DLC is gonna hopefully um, introduce like an, a whole new type of gameplay for players. We have some new you know, we have a female scout, which is actually a Russian female scout, and I think she's the first female that you'll be able to play is, in yeah. the first in one player. I'm excited about that. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. And there's a whole lot, whole host of weaponry that we're gonna introduce. We've teased a couple of them, but. Um, I won't be able to obviously divulge yeah, yeah. any more <laughs> involved than no, what's already sounds, been shown. That sounds but. so exciting. I'm, I'm yeah. actually not just somebody who's here to interview you about the game. I'm yeah. a fan of the game. Yeah. I've played since the originals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. played every single one since then till this day, so I'm really yeah. excited for it. And this, this is so big as far as for the industry to inspiring other games, not to mention who. That's true. Yeah. Competition. Yeah to make a retro uh, World War game as far yeah. as uh, going backwards into instead of futuristic. So yeah. that's really awesome and amazing. But now I want to touch on something different because actually you are a well culture mm -hmm. UI guy, let's say. Yeah. You, you helped design my favorite game of all time. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid V, the Phantom Pain. Yep. So you were there for that. Can yeah. you tell us about your experience designing that and being a part of that whole project? Uh, what do you want to know in, in particular? Um, just for your, when you were designing it, working with uh, everyone at the studio, whether it's yeah. Kojima or your, your company in yeah. general, what was your experience like enjoying that? Uh, I mean, it, for me, it was a dream come true. I actually moved to the US from the UK uh, for this job. It was my dream job. Like, ever since I played the original MGS um, and just fell in love with it, like, from you know the cinematic storytelling, the characters. Everything was just so memorable and so different from everything that I had seen at that time. And it, it was just moving the industry forward. And then when the 2001 E3 trailer got released for MGS2, that was it. That, that was, it set in my mind that I, I need to work on this game. I need to work on this franchise. And uh, yeah, I just set in my ways to kind of like, you know, uh, one day hopefully working uh, on a Metal Gear Solid game. And, that dream came to like almost a decade later, uh, slowly working my way up like from different companies. Um, I was at New Technics was my first job, uh, which was primarily racing games, and then I moved to Crytek, 
which worked on Price Person Shooters, the Crisis series. Right. I worked on all of those, and nice. then from there I moved, I made the big jump uh, to Los Angeles to work on Kojima Productions. Um, but this, yeah, it was, it's just mind blowing. It still feels like a dream. Like right. uh, even, even saying that I worked on Metal Gear Solid, and it's even the last one in the series. So yeah. it's been, it's been a huge inspiration for me, like throughout my gaming career, and you know, like every time. An MGS game comes out. It's always pushing the envelope. It's always making sure that you know it's not just becoming a stale franchise. There's always a new mechanic. There's always new gameplay features in there that are just so uh, you know mind blowing. So and this is a perfect, perfect segment because uh, yeah. the film that we're creating is about exactly what what you're saying right there. You had a dream about working for a company like that, yeah. and you worked your way yeah. through it through. until you yeah. could, until you got. To work for the game yeah. that you like. So what would you have to say to a, a young kid who's probably in high school or maybe college studying to yeah. be a game developer? Yeah. What would you have to say to them to advice to mm. help them prosper to be able to live their dreams and do mm. what they enjoy? I think one of the most important things is just to create a, a portfolio that you believe in, that you feel passionate about. Uh, don't try and just copy other people. Look at the trends and see what's happening in the industry, but try and come up with something that's more unique. Um, you know, just take your favorite games. This is what I did when I was starting out. Um, I just basically take a screenshot of the game UI and just do a paint over, completely like strip out all of the UI that's in the game currently and just design it from scratch. And I'd put my own kind of like styling on there. Um, I'd take like a couple of the, a variety of screenshots. So you'd have like the customization, you'd have like the main menu, and then you'd maybe have like an in-game screenshot. And I would just try and find images online which didn't have any of the UI on there and just start recreating what I think would be an improvement or you know something that would make this game a lot better or more appealing. So just start out like that. It, it doesn't have to be super fancy the first time around. You know, just keep at it. And I, if I showed my work from like back in the day, I, I'm kind of still proud of that. You know, I did those pieces, but looking back now, obviously they won't be they won't be the same quality as what I'm working on now. Um, but that's that's part of the process. You know, you need, you have to get your feet and your hands dirty to be able to you know level up because you learn so much just through uh, the process itself. And I've done that for a number of different games, and it just helped me in my career. Like getting to the next stage so you know for Kojima Productions even before I even applied to them I didn't realize that um, you know I'd have a chance to actually get anywhere near it so I just thought it would be a long far off dream that you know that would probably just live on as a dream um, but I, I did some mock-ups which um, you might have seen on my portfolio website and they were from when I think MGS5 was actually called Project Ogre Yep. And I did my own mock-ups and they were kind of using the screenshots that were released at that time. You know, the bad cam shots, they weren't like direct feed images or anything. And I'll just do my paint overs on those. And I actually used that in my original application. So um, I just wrote this massive email which had like, you know, everything that I wanted to do at Kojima Productions and what I'd been doing throughout my whole life, you know, why I wanted to work at this studio, what it was that appealed to me. And I just sent this email out and I just didn't think anything of it. I just thought, yep, it's just going to come back and they're going to say no. Um, and then the recruiter actually replied back after like two or three weeks. I wasn't expecting anything back, but the recruiter uh, replied back and he said, um, we like your work and we think, you know, you have good experience, but we don't believe that we can get your visa. And at that time I was thinking, yeah, maybe that's going to be too difficult. You know, it won't be... Um, an easy thing to get my visa sorted out because of all the stuff that was happening at the time politically. So I was like, I took some time to kind of think it over, and then then I was actually like, you know, this is a one, once in a lifetime opportunity. What is it exactly that they couldn't get? You know, what was it that my visa situation wouldn't be able to get, get solved? So um, I actually kind of drilled deeper, and I was like, let me let me just see how this goes and I kind of persisted a lot so you know any kind of rejection that sounded like a rejection I'd be like so what is it exactly that I'm missing you know um, I've got an education I've you know I love the games I've done all this extra work and I'll do loads more extra work if I need to but um, it just turned out that you know there was down to figuring out what kind of evidence I need to show for my visa and 
once we understood exactly what the requirements were, I was like, right, let me just get references, let me just get all of my evidence together and just go for this because, you know, I'm not going to get another chance. So, yeah, I just persisted and in the end, it came back that my visa got approved and, yeah, it was time to move house and move country. <laughs> So, Living the dream. Yeah, Living it, the dream. It, was, it was so surreal once I got that, you know, that answer back and I had an interview with the team. I made sure that, um, you know, I was kind of prepped for the interview. Uh, I read up on all of their profiles. I tried to find them on LinkedIn and just basically see exactly what they were working on so I could just give them some questions in the interview. And it was, I was really scared, but um, thank God, you know, it came through in the end. And, uh, yeah, been blessed to work on such a big franchise. It's amazing. So we got the the name of Zara coming out soon. Yeah, we have possible newer DLCs coming out as well for the season pass. Yeah, we have more updates and, and adjustments and things yeah. like that coming out for the EA's Battlefield Ground. Yeah, and we want to thank you for this interview to have a chat with you to share your story yeah. with us for this great, great, great uh, inspirational documentary we're doing for the people. Thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much. We spoke about Battlefield, the experience that you have with this awesome game. The new DLC is called In the Name of the Czar, coming out sometime this year. It's looking really good. It's an amazing uh, concept. They have a new game mode that is the supply drops. Supply drops drop throughout the uh, map and teams have to fight to get it. It's really in-depth, awesome content that i'm really excited for on top of that it's going to be six new maps new weapons new game mode of course and just so many big changes to the scout class these are things that i personally play in this game i personally enjoy having fun with a great team and really coordinating the battlefield it really feels like a battlefield because you have to pay attention to all of what's happening to if you want to actually win the game you know, face these objectives. That said, guys, the interview with Omar, we appreciate everyone who has sat down with us during our filming of the documentary to talk about these games and provide you guys with small updates about what's happening in the video game world. We appreciate you. Hope you can check us out at madgamer.com. If you want to show support, we are an independent website. You can go to patreon.com slash madgamer. Show your support over there pledge to us and uh, we'll be happy to provide you with some exclusive content that said guys we thank you for your time i am mad gamer and so are you